So OrFinders is a publicly traded company on the venture exchange under the symbol ORX. Uh, we're gold focused and we're focused in the Abbott Tibby. Uh, we've had three major milestones already in 2018. That includes the PEA on the Murata open pit. Uh, the economics were fantastic. That also includes the acquisition of what we call the Knight project. The Knight project was nine different properties from three different property owners. It took a long time to put that together. Everything came to fruition in, in early 2018. And, and finally, in January 30th, we announced we're going to be spinning out a completely new company. This is going to be a new publicly traded company, of course, on the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange. And we're going to be taking one of that nine, nine assets from the Knight project and putting it into a silver cobalt vehicle, which will form the basis of a new uh, public company that's going to be focused on a diversified battery metals portfolio. The valuations in that sector, the demand for, for the inputs that go into electric vehicle and mass energy grid storage uh, systems just simply can't be ignored. And we think this is a huge value creation opportunity for the company and its shareholders. Well, the Murado and the Knight project are fundamental to Orfinder's uh, existing success and, and ultimately its future. Um, the Murado itself was the, the, the foundational, the flagship asset of Orfinder's when we went public back in 2013. Uh, we took it on to drill out a multi-million ounce deposit and we feel that opportunity is still there, but it requires more capital to do so. Uh, when I took over the day-to-day -day operations in 2015, uh, we focused, uh, it was a challenging, challenging time for the company, it was a challenging time for the, for the market in general. And, and what we did is we, we took the challenge, challenging situation and we flipped it on its head and we looked at, hey, we've got fantastic infrastructure, we've got high-grade uh, mineralization near surface, what can we do to improve our situation? And that, that ultimately resulted in our, in our bulk sample in 2017, uh, where we generated our own cash flow. And, and that was the, the genesis for the PEA, which just came out, as I said before, has, uh, we've got the proof of concept with the bulk sample, we've got the independent economics uh, confirmed, and we think the future for 2018 in terms of, uh, of securing a toll milling contract and, and getting this thing permitted uh, it prevents, pr presents a very bright future for our shareholders. Uh, and, and of course, uh, the Knight project is, is, is a tremendous opportunity as well. Uh, it's, it's tough to pick a favorite between those two assets. It's like picking between favorites between your children, but I, I really believe the Knight has uh, company making ability. Uh, it sits on top of a four million ounce resource. And, and as I said, it's got some of the best gold intersections in Canada we've ever seen. So I think uh, again, 2018 uh, and the growth behind these assets is, is gonna be exceptional. For us, we're all, it's all about focusing on the assets. As I said before, the Murado uh, needs to be permitted, permitted and we believe that's between a six to 12 month process. And, and once that's done, we're gonna be in a situation to generate our own free cash flow. That has uh, huge growth potentials. For a junior to be able to generate its own cash flow means uh, non-dilutive financing, and that's significant. Uh, from the Knight's perspective, we are focused on creating a unified model. Um, we acquired nine different properties from three different owners. There's a lot of data there. There's over 30,000 meters worth of drilling. And we, we think over $60 million worth of work that's been completed on this project. But it's been fragmented. And so our objective here, our, our next strategy there is to really create a single unified uh, geological model and ultimately solve the riddle behind the Knight project. Additionally, we're going to be focused on, uh, on this new company, Power War. We think is a tremendous opportunity to take advantage of the battery metal space and, uh, and, and the expected demand for all sorts of different metals that are going to be composed uh, or go into the batteries for electric vehicles, but also mass energy storage on the grid. Well, I think the major challenge that OreFinders is facing right now is, is the fact that it's released so much information in such a short period of time. We had three major news releases in, in January 20, 2018, and it's, it's a lot for the market to absorb. It's a lot for anybody to absorb. So, so my challenge right now is, is going out there and explaining the difference between price and value. And I think there's a huge disconnect uh, between the price and value that you see in ore finders right now. We're about a 10 million market, uh, market cap company, but I think uh, the value that you get when you buy a share of ore finders is significantly more than that. So, 
So it's really about telling our story and explaining the inherent value in our assets. And you know, the second aspect would be obviously our cost of capital. And that's something that's very important to us because uh, as a manager and a director, uh, our board are significant owners and that's how we act. And, and we're very sensitive to our cost of capital and, and, and dilutive. And you can see that with all the transactions uh, we're, we're doing vis-a-vis -vis, um, the Power Ore and the spinoff company there. And obviously, uh, us trying to create free cash flow out of the Murado project. So it's, it's really about getting our message out there and, and lowering our cost of capital. Being listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange really means being associated with the premier market for uh, resource exchanges. Uh, quite simply, Toronto is the mining finance capital of the world. It's got the, the deepest pool of geologists, mining engineers, lawyers, bankers, financiers, and of course entrepreneurs, which, which really are the life, lifeblood behind our industry. So, uh, and it's all really anchored by the Toronto Stock Exchange and of course the venture uh, where Orefinders has. So we're, we couldn't be more pleased with, uh, with, with this premier market. It gives us great exposure and access to capital all over the world.